Charlie. Good morning. Well, whether you're sitting in here, or sitting outside, or sitting at home, we want to welcome you to this third Sunday of Easter. Can you believe it? It's already two weeks past Easter. It seemed like we kept waiting for Easter, and it seemed like Easter was never going to get here. And now we're already two weeks past Easter. So uh, but welcome to this third Sunday of Easter service. Um, pray that you will be ready to be blessed. Uh, we already have been with Charles' music already. So, uh, But at this time... Uh, we are going to join in with the music with Charlie as we're going to stand and sing, Easter people, raise your voices. Let us stand as we sing. sing this song, Alleluia, East Everlasting Triumph. I love that. I love that last verse. Uh, Easter reminds us that we do have an everlasting triumph, no matter how bad it seems like it was, was going to be. And we know that the disciples that week thought it was really bad before the, that Sunday came. Uh, at this time, the flowers, the beautiful flowers. Did you do this, Kim? Uh, yes, <laughs> they are beautiful. You can really tell the magic that you have, Kim. Those are beautiful, absolutely beautiful. The flowers in the sanctuary are placed in the sanctuary this morning by David and Barb McElroy to the glory of God and in memory of their mothers, Cora Marie McElroy and Anna McGarry, who shared an April birth month. That's an interesting sight. That's beautiful flowers. Uh, and at this time, as we're thinking about the flowers, because as we notice, the flowers in a beautiful arrangement are not all the same, just like our prayers are not always going to be the same. Sometimes our prayers are going to be like many of our prayers this past year, Lord, help. <laughs> we don't understand. Help us. Uh, but sometimes they're, they're going to be different, just like the red is different from the white flowers, which are different from the pink, which are different from the, the green leaves. Everything different, though, makes up a wonderful whole, and it makes it beautiful. Our different prayers, whether it's Lord help or whether it's Lord thank you, thank you for hearing my prayer and answering it, thank you for the blessings that you have given us. Uh, whatever the different type of prayers we have, whether it's a prayer of concern uh, or an intercessory prayer for someone we care about, 
or whether it's a prayer of joy, a prayer of, of thankfulness, a prayer of, of what God has blessed us with, uh, it all matches together in our prayer life to, to bless us in a wonderful way. As you see there on your prayer list, the, uh, the, uh, the list is there. Look at that. Are there any other concerns or joys uh, that we would like to lift up to make this a combined prayer time for each of us? Yes, Annabelle. Oh, good. That's a concern and a joy. It kind of all mixed up there together, isn't it, Well, uh, So is she doing pretty well with the cast on? I guess it has a cast on. Is she doing pretty well with that? Good, good. Glad to hear that. Anybody else? Either a joy or a concern or both. Oh my goodness, oh, that is a joy and a concern, a concern for the parents, but a joy for, the, for Michael, that's awesome. So which day was it, Michael? Um, Friday. Friday, awesome, awesome. Uh, who else had an April birthday? Anybody else have an April birthday? Anybody? Well, Michael, we're going to sing you happy birthday for April and stuff, <laughs> not to put you on the spot or anything. Let's sing Michael Happy Birthday. Happy Birthday to you. Happy Birthday to you. Happy Birthday, God bless you. Happy Birthday to you. And may you have many more. And as a teenager, you hopefully you will have many more. A lot more than a lot of us here. <laughs> Uh, already, so. Uh, yes. that affects the whole community. Um, you know, it's two different... Yeah, it's, it's going to affect uh, the, this community for a long time because two schools are involved, all the children, all the teachers, you know, everyone, everyone's involved in that. just reminds us what the Easter message is all about, is that we do have a triumph. Right? Life triumphs over death. Uh, even though it, uh, it's tragic at times and stuff, but we have a message of hope to give uh, to people. And I talked with Jeremy last night, and one of the things he was saying was that family didn't have really a faith support group. Uh, and one of the things that he realized that he had was a faith support group with the church that, you know, it, sometimes we take that for granted. Sometimes we take for granted that we have a faith support group that helps us through these tragic times. And he says it just brought that out to him very clearly when he realized this family did not have that as much as, as he did. And so, you know, it just... You know, that's so reach out, reach out to Jeremy and, and those because it's, it's going to be a long, it's going to be a long process. The grieving process has just started for the children, for the teachers, for, for all those involved. Uh, the grieving process has just started. So we need to be there to support uh, in any way that we can. So anybody else? Joys or concerns, or yes. A wonderful turnout at the community baby shower yesterday. It was exciting to see what good things are going to come from that as a result. That's awesome. And I, I was also excited to see people that were not from our church family that were.
were um, curious and impressed that we were moving forward with such, such a project. And um, I could tell that they intended to participate more well, good. That's fantastic. In fact, I was going to have you here in a little bit share share some of the things here, and so, but you can still do that because that way those at home can hear better uh, and everything. But that is awesome. That is awesome. Anybody else? Well, let's go to the Lord in prayer then, and and uh, remember that all our prayers, no matter how they look like today or tomorrow or the next day. They go together to make a beautiful bouquet with God. So let us pray. Gracious Lord, we do thank you for your many, many blessings. We do thank you that you are here for us and that as a faith community that we can gain strength from the fact that we have an Easter to celebrate, that we have a, a victory over sin and death to celebrate, that we have a triumph of life over death to celebrate. And Lord, when, when we realize that uh, there are so many times that we grieve because of either sin or death or things that happen in our lives, we realize that you are there to pick us up and that we are there to help each other and to support each other as you pick us up in your hands. Lord, we just pray that you would be with each one, each of the students, each of the teachers, everyone that's in the family, everyone that's impacted by that tragedy, but also the other things that are happening in each of our lives. Lord, each of us at times need to be picked up, need to be supported, need to be in your hands. And Lord, we thank you that you are so willing to do that for us. Bless us now. Bless us now. We pray for those who need healing, Lord. We pray for you, that you would heal them. We pray for those who need care and comfort. We pray that you would bring that into their lives. For Lord, for those who are grieving, we pray that you would help them to know that the grieving will not last forever. And Lord, we just pray and thank you for all the many blessings that you've given us. And just pray that as we gather together as a people of God, we are reminded of that Easter joy that only you can give. And now, Lord, we pray as you have taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Uh, and Janice, if, if you would, uh, this would be a good time as we think of the offering. We're not going to pass offering plates, but we do have the basket. And we do thank you uh, for those of here and also at home who have continued to be so faithful in giving and sending in checks and stuff. You've been so faithful, and we thank you for that. Again, exciting day yesterday on so many levels. It was exciting um, just the mission that we had for the bear closet to um, invite the community to come in and bring donations. Um, we had donations of things. We had donations of money, which is great because... Now we have to have places and shelving and, um, and the means to store all this stuff. And so that's part of the challenge and we're excited about that. It was fabulous to have our young people out there. Um, you have been so proud that they were the hands and feet and face and heart of our church and how they represented us well. Some of them have been on TV, so be sure you go to WLOS so you can check out and um, identify those you who are on TV. <laughs> Maybe they didn't want to be. Um, Let's see, other things, uh, just there was a tremendous amount uh, of things that came in. And also, as I mentioned, the fact that we had folks that aren't necessarily from within our church family to come and um, to see what was going on, some that didn't even have stuff, but just to see what are y'all doing. And um, so that was exciting. Um, so please um, be in prayer about this ministry. 
Uh, later on, we're going to talk about other ways that everybody in the church can plug in if you want to. And it could be some very simple things that don't require hauling a box of diapers up the stairs. It might be um, answering a phone call or writing down, taking the information from a person who's in need. Um, but there are going to be some, um, some many different ways that folks can plug in. I hope you'll um, prayerfully consider that as we move forward.
Charlie put the word special to special music just with his way of doing that. So that's, that's awesome, Charlie. But thank you very much. Scripture reading this morning comes to us uh, once again from the Gospel of Luke. Uh, and it's the 24th chapter. We're going to be going to the end of this passage this time, in the first part of this resurrection passage. Um, we'll be starting with verse 8. And they remembered his words and returned from the sepulcher and told all these things unto the eleven and to all the rest. It was Mary Magdalene and Joanna and Mary the mother of James and other women that were with them which told these things unto the apostles. And their words seemed to the apostles as idle tales, and they believed them not. But then arose Peter and ran into the sepulcher, and stooping down he beheld the linen cloths laid by themselves, and departed, wondering in himself at that which was to come to pass. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, we thank you so much for your many, many blessings. Lord, you have blessed us so richly. As a church, as individuals, Lord, your blessings are upon us. And we thank you for that. And Lord, we just pray that you would just continue to help us to see you. And to see the Easter wonderful, joyous message of resurrection and life triumphing over death. Lord, that wonderful message that you have given us to share with others. Help us to share that. Help us to be that for others. For it is in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Spirit, in the name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. In this passage, the last couple of weeks, we've looked at this uh, uh, verse. It's like 12 verses here in, uh, in Luke, the, the 24th chapter. Um, but yet, there, we have seen there's so much that is impacted just in the, this short one event of the women going to the tomb. And we have seen uh, the last couple of weeks a couple of different things about that, about how uh, they did not find what they expected. That sometimes in life we don't find what we expect. Sometimes we expect certain things and that's not what we find. That's not what we get. Uh, and then uh, we also looked about how, uh, you know, we have to remember what Jesus said to us. Uh, that sometimes our memories are important. You know, remember what he said to you. And as they thought back, they thought and said, oh, yes, you know, uh, our memories are important. And we need to use our memories. Sometimes our memories can be painful, like when we are grieving the loss of a loved one. Sometimes our memories can be painful. But we need to celebrate the fact that God has given us a wonderful capability of having memories and how that can bless us and how we need to use that to remember those things that have gone on before in our lives, how God has blessed us in the past. And when God has blessed us in the past, we know that he will lead us in the, in the future with blessings as well. Now today I want to look at this last part of this uh, uh, passage, and uh, it says it was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, and Mary, the mother of James, and the other women that were with them, which told these things unto the apostles. But their words seemed to them as idle tales, and they believed them not. Now I don't know about you, but when you have something exciting to tell, you know, the women went to the tomb. They didn't find what they expected. They were a little discouraged. They were frightened. They saw two angels that, you know, that, that kind of was a frightening experience. They were scared. They were perplexed. They didn't know exactly how to feel. They didn't know exactly how what to say. Um, but they were excited. They, they had something that they now had to share. Uh, and they went back to the disciples. They thought of all the people who would understand what we just experienced would be the disciples who had seen uh, and been in ministry with Jesus. And they had seen the unexpected. They had seen the unexplained. They had seen miracles happen that they couldn't explain away. Uh, they had been with Jesus and these disciples for three years 
And they said, well, if anybody could believe us, if anybody could believe what has just happened to us, as we went to the tomb, the body was gone. Uh, we saw angels in the tomb instead of the body of Jesus. If anybody could believe our experience that we have just experienced seeing angels and what the angels have told to us and that Jesus is now no longer dead but alive, if anybody would, could believe us, it would be the disciples. And so they ran to the disciples and they went to share their story. And as they were sharing their story, they were telling all that had happened. And I'm sure they thought, well, these disciples are going to be so happy. <laughs> They're going to say, oh, great job. Wow, I wish I could have been there with you. I believe everything that happened. But that's not the response they got. As they shared with the disciples... This wonderful journey, this wonderful experience that they had just had at the empty tomb. It says the disciples did not believe them. And they thought the women were just sharing idle tales. You know, it's difficult when people don't believe us. It's difficult when we have an experience and people don't want to hear it or they don't want to believe it or they can't they they just say oh well you're just you know you're just a little emotional <laughs> you know there are there are times in our lives that that sometimes people don't listen sometimes people don't hear and sometimes we wonder if it is are we too emotional are we too caught up in this. Did this really happen? You know, did I really see angels? You know, I've had people in churches throughout my years that have come to me and said, I saw an angel. You know, whether it was in their dream or another time. And, and I said, well, have you shared that with the church? And they said, no. No, because I don't know whether they would believe me. You know, that's, that's something we have to think about. Something that God gives us that's an amazing, wonderful, joyous experience of, of seeing angels or seeing miracles, seeing things that are unexplainable, and yet we don't share them because we're afraid people won't believe us. We're afraid people are going to look at it down on us and think, oh, <laughs> we can't really trust what that person says or sees or experiences. We almost feel like if we say that, people are going to start to think we're seeing UFOs and space aliens and stuff. These women, but this is not an experience just for women. You know, sometimes women feel like they're not listened to and not believed, but you maybe children. Children sometimes feel that they're not listened to, not believed. Youth sometimes feel like they're not listened to and not believed by parents or by others. Uh, sometimes we feel like they won't believe us because we're not rich, because we're not in the high society. We're not the, in the really up there part of society. So people won't listen to me because I'm poor or don't have the social status that others have. Or maybe there are other reasons. Every one of us has some reason that we feel like we are different. Even as a preacher, sometimes we feel like <laughs> we are different. <laughs> and sometimes we wonder, are people, can I share this? Will people listen? Will people understand? Sometimes we say no whether it's you with your reasons because we're all different in some ways sometimes high school really points that out doesn't it you know um, you know sometimes high school boy you're really you're either with the haves or the have-nots and it doesn't matter there because there's many forms of haves and have-nots there's not just one have and have-not there's all sorts of haves and have-nots and hopefully, hopefully everyone will find some have a group to be in uh, in high school. But, you know, it doesn't just stop there in high school, does it? It continues on in life. 
one of the things we keep looking for throughout the rest of our lives is fitting in, feeling normal, feeling like we have a haves to be a part of. And that we're not the have-nots all the time. These ladies probably wondered, as the disciples kind of snickered at them and said, oh, that's just idle tales. You know, we don't believe it. You know, the women were probably wondering, why would God give us this? Why would God show us these angels? Why would God give us this message? Why would God tell us to go back and tell the people when all they're going to do is laugh at us and snicker at us? Why would God have me do that? And then the ladies soon realized why. Because one person, one person in that group of disciples, one person in that, you know, I, we, we don't know whether how many of the disciples were at, there at the time that they were sharing this, whether it was the small group of 12 in the upper room or whether it was the larger group and they were outside somewhere. We don't know where they were when they told the disciples this. We don't know how many were there. But we do know this. One person, one disciple listened and then said, I want to find out for myself. What they said just is amazing, but I want to find out for myself. And that disciple was Peter. <clears throat> Peter, who later became one of the, the spiritual giants, who later became one of the leaders of the church, who later became, and all because of the witness and testimony of the women who went to the tomb and said, Jesus is not dead, he's alive. We have seen him and we've seen the angels. He's not dead, but he's alive. One disciple decided they were going to try it out and see. And it says Peter got up and went by himself to the sepulcher just to see if this could possibly be true. And then the ladies, I'm sure, were all of a sudden realized they had done what God wanted them to do. They had gone to the tomb. They didn't find what they expected. They, they, they saw this wonderful, amazing experience with Jesus and the angels. And then they went and told others, but people laughed at them. People snickered at them. But then they realized one person, one person heard them. And what a difference that one person made. But yet if it wasn't for the ladies... If it wasn't for the ladies being faithful and sharing what they, their experiences that they had with God and their experience of the power of the resurrection, the life-given power of the resurrection, if it wasn't for them, where would we be? Where would we be? So yes, there are times that we feel like we're in the have-not groups. Times that we think people are not going to listen. Times that we think that people are not going to care. But if we are faithful like these ladies were and share our experiences that we have with God and share that life-giving power of the resurrection, the power, that triumph of life over death, if we share that with people, who knows what one person, what one person might hear that experience that we have and what a difference it can make for coming generations, for the coming church. Yes, people may not listen to us because we're in whatever group, have not group. But if one person, if we are faithful in one person, this passage tells us it can change the course of a whole generation. So let us, on this third Sunday of Easter, know that whether we are haves or have-nots, that no matter what our situation is, 
If we are faithful to share our experience of the life-giving triumph of Easter in our lives, it can make a difference. God can use that to bless others. Amen. Amen. And as we sing about this life-giving triumph, let's stand as we sing, Christ is risen. Christ is risen. Let's stand as we sing.
you're doing today. <laughs> <laughs>